Now the minutes are ticking down until landfall, so let's get back over to Kyle Roberts for check on Milton. Yeah, that's exactly right. About 24 hours from now or so, more so tomorrow night into early Thursday morning, so a little over 24 hours when this storm will be making landfall in Florida. Right now, Category 5 storm. I mean, earlier today the eye was kind of obscured by the clouds, and then it started intensifying again, and I mean, just look at that pinpoint eye uh, within Milton at the moment. Uh, I mean, you just don't have to be a meteorologist to look at that and go, yep, that's probably a very powerful hurricane, and it absolutely is. Category 5 storm at the moment in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Wind speeds of 165 miles an hour, gusting to 200 at the moment, and it's going to decrease at least in terms of wind speed as it approaches the Florida coastline. But that's really not going to make a difference for just how high or how uh, bad the storm surge is going to be. And then also it's still going to be a very strong storm as it crosses the central part of Florida. Strong enough to cause widespread power outages, trees down, all things like that. Anywhere from Tampa to Orlando, Fort Myers, Melbourne, all of those areas are going to see significant impacts from uh, Milton as it makes landfall. There you go, about 1 a.m. tomorrow morning or really Thursday morning when that storm's moving into the uh, Florida coastline there. 10 to 15 feet of storm surge Tampa Bay to Sarasota. Outside of that, it's about 5 to 10 feet stretching down to Fort Myers. South Florida, not a ton in the way of storm surge. On the backside of this storm, is once it moves out over the Atlantic, then the winds from this direction driving the Atlantic Ocean into the Daytona Beach up to Jacksonville area, they could see about three to five feet of storm surge along the eastern coastline of Florida. Of course, inland Florida will see tons of rain as well, a foot to 16 inches, maybe some localized totals up to 18. Rainfall totals drop off pretty quickly, kind of outside of this center swath of the storm. So even down toward Miami, not going to get a ton in the way of rainfall and up toward Jacksonville, Tallahassee, not going to get as much as well. A reminder, this storm will not impact Georgia, the Carolinas, Tennessee that were so severely affected by Helene. However, Tampa and portions of the west coast of Florida that did have significant impacts and significant storm surge from Helene will see this one as well, obviously. 84 the high today, 82 is the normal, 2 degrees above normal, well above normal this morning, but quite a few of you kind of outside of the DFW area were much cooler than that 68 that happened at DFW this morning. 83 outside right now, humidity very low. That's why this morning felt nice. That's why this afternoon felt nice as well. Unfortunately, Pollen has not felt nice. If you're a ragweed sufferer, it continues to stay high. Mountain cedar is moderate and fungus is low. Tonight and into tomorrow morning should be the coolest night of the week. 50s for eastern North Texas, low 60s for the DFW area and out to the west. Back close to normal, pretty seasonable morning to start the day tomorrow. But I do have us warmer tomorrow afternoon than today. Upper 80s for most of you, maybe even a few 90s out to the west. Low to mid 80s across eastern North Texas. High pressure continues to just stay off to the west, blocking any storm systems from reaching us and giving us rain chances. But it does look like a decent trough of low pressure may happen along the Great Lakes as we head into next week, and that could shove high pressure farther to the south and give us a little stronger cold front as we head into next week. It's not going to bring back a lot in the way of rain chances, it looks like but it may cool us down a little bit more. Light winds and seasonable tonight, though 62 will be your low, and then tomorrow it's an ozone action day. Low humidity, warm and dry, 88 will be your high. First seven of that 14-day forecast, 90s return for Texas OU weekend. We will stay dry through Texas OU weekend, but there, look at Monday and Tuesday. 85 Monday, 79 for a high on Tuesday. 78 Wednesday, morning lows well down in the 50s, so a little bit better shot of fall air potentially toward the middle part of next week. But as I mentioned, doesn't look like a lot in the way of rain chances. Maybe some showers around over a week from now on Wednesday, but I'm not very uh, optimistic about that. Just threw in a 10% coverage there just in case we do have some showers in the area. We'll watch that closely as we get closer. But I mean, that's my only prospect at any sort of rain chances anytime soon at the moment. But here's hoping it feels a little bit more fall-like next week.